What's the time for? It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 3, lesson number 9. Integration by substitution 5, using the square root of a squared minus x squared. Now, if your integrand, the thing that you are integrating, contains a term of the form, the square root of a squared minus x squared, then it is often useful to use the substitution x equals a sine theta. And I will show you why. So, examples 1 to 13 are in the previous integration by substitution lessons. So this is the 14th example using integration by substitution. And here it is here, using the substitution, x equals 2 sine theta, evaluate this integral here. x plus 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared, dx between 0 and 1. So let's do that. Well, we know the first thing we want to do, we are letting x equal 2 sine theta. So in here, instead of x squared, we'd have 2 sine theta squared. So let x equal 2 sine theta. That way then, let's take the 4 minus x squared. Well, 4 minus x squared will become 4 minus 2 sine theta, all squared. From there, if you square 2 sine theta, well, 2 sine theta times 2 sine theta, 2 times 2 is 4, sine theta times theta is sine, theta, sine squared theta, so we'd have 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. What we could do with that, though, Adam, is... Perfect, take out a common factor of 4. If you take out a common factor of 4, you have 4 bracket 1 minus sine squared theta. And we all know that 1 minus sine squared theta is, you got it, it's cos squared theta. Woo! So that is what we have here. So we'd have the square root of 4 minus x squared would be the square root of 4 cos squared theta. Also, if you think about that, if you are taking the square root of this 4 cos squared theta, well, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of cos squared theta is cos theta. So you could write that as 2 cos theta. But moving on, anyway, we still have these other parts. We've still got our x plus 1 in terms of x, and we'd still have our dx, obviously, in terms of x. And we've also got these limits in terms of x. What we need to do is we need to write everything in terms of a theta. So the square root of 4 minus x squared, we've got that in terms of theta. We need to rewrite dx in terms of theta, x plus 1 in terms of theta, and our limits in terms of theta. We need everything in terms of theta. Moving on then, if x equals 2 sine theta, well, let's think about the dx part. We know we would differentiate x with respect to theta. So dx by d theta would be, if you differentiate 2 sine theta, you get 2 cos theta. Multiply both sides by d theta, and that will give us dx equals 2 cos theta d theta. So we know then we're absolutely fine for this bit at the bottom, and we know we can swap dx with 2 cos theta d theta. We also need to think, right, well, x plus 1, what is x plus 1 equal to in terms of theta? Well, we know x is equal to 2 sine theta, so x plus 1 must be 2 sine theta plus 1. So we can swap this bit as well, so we're absolutely fine for swapping that. However, what do you need to remember if you have limits, Megan? Brilliant. You need to write the limits in terms of the new variable. So here, your new variable is theta. So you're thinking, right, just now these limits are in terms of x. So let's take the 0. When x equals 0, sub that into this bit here. If we sub that into x equals 2 sine theta, that'll let us find theta. So doing that, if x equals 0, we'd have 0 equals 2 sine theta. And if we divide both sides by 2, we would get sine theta equals 0. So that's just replacing x here with 0, then dividing by 2. So sine theta would equal 0. And if sine theta equals 0, well, theta 0 as well. Just think about your sine graph. Do the same thing with 1. If x equals 1, well, you're doing the same thing. Take this part here, take the substitute, and replace x with 1. So 1 would equal 2 sine theta. From there then, if 1 equals 2 sine theta, well, sine theta, if you divide both sides by 2, you would get sine theta as a half. And hopefully, you know, inverse sine would be perfect. You would get 30 degrees. But remember, in advanced higher, use radians. So theta is going to be pi over 6. 
From there then, we want to rewrite all of this in terms of theta. So to do that, we now know the limits. The limits we would have, we'd have pi over six and zero. The square root of four minus x squared would be the square root of four cos squared theta. But if we square root that, we'd have two cos theta. dx is equal to two sine theta d theta, and x plus one would just be this substitute plus one. So going over the page then, the limits we just found out, we had that as pi over six and zero. X plus one is just our substitute plus one. So x was equal to two sine theta. So then we add one to that. Remember the square root of four minus x squared. Well, four minus x squared is four cos squared theta. So if we square root that, square root the four, square root the cos squared, and we'd have two cos theta. And dx, again, just flipping back, dx was equal to two cos theta d theta. So we can replace dx with two cos theta d theta. If you look at this though, what do you notice, Fiona? Brilliant, yes, you're dividing by two cos theta and you're multiplying by two cos theta. So they will cancel out and you will be left with the integral between zero and pi over six of just the two sine theta plus one. So you'd be integrating that. From there then, well, we are safe to now integrate. If you integrate the two sine theta, that will give you, well, you know, sine will go to a negative cos and the two will stay as it is. So we'd have negative two cos theta. Plus one, if you integrate that with respect to theta, that will give you just theta. So we'd have negative theta between pi over six and zero. You know from there you replace theta with pi over six, so you'd have negative two cos pi over six plus pi over six. Take away and then replace theta with zero, so negative two cos zero plus zero. And then from there you can start working that out. So negative two, let's leave the negative two. Cos of pi over six, if you think about your exact value triangles, think, right, pi over six, pi is 180, divide that by six is 30. Cos of 30 will give you root three over two. We're still adding on this pi over six. We're taking away negative, which will make plus, and then you'd have two cos zero. And cos of zero is one, which means you would just have two times one. And then you're taking away zero, so you can just ignore that. From there then, well, you are multiplying the root three by two and you're dividing by two, so they will both cancel out, leaving you with the negative root three. You're still adding on that pi over six and we're still adding on two. And that will be your answer. You've gathered your roots, you've gathered the terms with pi and you've got the numbers just as they are. So that will be your answer. Remember, leave exact values. Don't start banging that into the calculator. Just leave it as an exact value. Try these questions. Integration by substitution five. It's when you have the square root of a squared minus x squared. Give these questions a shot. See how you get on in the booklet, page 62. Best of luck. Have fun. Bye.